Oh, it's lagging again. There we go. We're live. What's going on, guys? Thanks for checking out this podcast short. Uh, we're going to talk today about what kind of bait we like to use in the wintertime to catch redfish, uh, as well as black drum. But it's it's our inshore and nearshore kind of arsenal of actual live and cut and dead bait that we're going to use to to catch these fish. And so if you're on our Patreon, you've heard us talk a little bit about recently about some of the baits that we've liked and do like to use. Um, but, but we're going to kind of dive into that here. So Mike, I'll let you start it off with, you know, cut some of the, some of the stuff that you like to fish, you know, in the creeks as well as on the docks I say, I think the as well as off the beach. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the biggest thing, especially like inshore is going to be shrimp. Yeah. I mean, that's it catches everything. It catches everything. It's easily accessible. Um, especially live shrimp. If you can get live shrimp, yeah. especially, but you know, I mean, cut dead shrimp is, I mean, anything will eat it. So, and you can put it in any situation. Definitely. So, um, as far as rigging it, however you want to go about yeah. it. I mean, I fished However, it on a bottom sweeper. I fished it on a first flight yeah. Carolina treat. I fished on a Carolina rig. I would say on I strike jig heads. Yeah, I strike jig heads. <laughs> so, you know, sky's the limit on that one. It really is. And, and shrimp is, it really is such a good bait because everything does eat it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I would say, I, honestly, if I had to pick one bait to fish throughout the winter, it would be a live shrimp. Like if I could get my hands on live shrimp every single time, you could go catch every single inshore fish on that bait. Um, what would your number two be? Ooh, number two is probably going to be blue crab. blue crab. And I think that's just another thing. It's like ease of accessibility. Definitely. You can um, just go buy it. Yeah, you can go buy it. That I feel like a lot of people that are at least getting into fishing, you know, they're trying to figure out how to maximize their time in the water. You know, they don't want to go spend all day looking for bait or whatever. Especially it may in the be. winter, golly, it sucks to go try to catch bait in the winter. Yeah, it's so, really next to impossible. Yeah, so. and unless you know exactly where you know a school in Manhattan is or blah yeah. blah blah, you know, you're wasting a lot of your day to try and find that bait, and then you're probably still not going to be successful. So you know, shrimp, blue crab, two great things that you can go buy easily accessible, take out there with you for sure, um, and. Like we said on the shrimp, you can catch everything. You'll catch trout, redfish, black drum, sheep's head, flounder, Striper. with stripers. With the blue crab, you are limiting yourself. You're starting to limit yourself, but you're still going to catch your redfish, your black drum, your sheep's head. I've never, I've personally never caught trout on blue crab, nope. but off the beach, you'll catch tog on blue crab. You'll catch sheep's head out there. You'll catch porgies out there. Um, yep. So same sea with the bass. shrimp as well, sea bass. But but the the nice thing about that blue crab is if you are fishing around here that might still have some wintertime pinfish or some other trash hanging around, that, that blue crab holds on for a little bit longer. Like that shrimp, if there's a pinfish or any type of trash fish inshore or near shore um, around that touches that thing before the redfish does or the black drum does, it's gone. So mm-hmm. um, that's the beauty of the crab is you can really keep it down there for a little while. So I'll go next my my next top honestly i would say my two topper the shrimp and then this which would be the mud crab mm-hmm. um just for the simple fact of how durable it is but i've had that thing unlock some freaking picky fish before like where i can't get to eat anything and i pitch a mud crab in there yeah. and just they stomp it immediately so if you can smell my feet right now i do apologize because i'm starting to be able to smell and i got my ankle cocked in a different direction and i can definitely smell what's going on down there Coming out of the extra tufts? Yeah, coming out. I need some new extra tufts. If anybody on here wants to give me a Christmas present, a new pair of extra tufts will be awesome. Thank you so much. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. But um, the mud crab, super productive, just like the blue crab. I would say I'd take the mud crab over the blue crab personally. Um, and, the, you know, we've I've done a video on this with Salt Strong. I think I've done one personally as well, talking about how to catch mud crabs and how to rig them. Um, but if you, just, if you just searched my name, I believe, and mud crabs, that video would come up. So, um you really want to pick the warmer days this time of year to go pick mud crabs. Then you're flipping over oysters, go on an oyster bed at low tide, flip oysters over, make sure you wear gloves, bring yourself like a little spade so you can kind of use that to flip the oysters over, have a little bucket, throw them in there. And then I'm just trying to pop that hook through their armpit, not on necessarily their claw, but just like one of their legs, mm-hmm. and then easily pop it out the top of their shell. If you if you try to go too quick, you're going to smash the crab. But the beauty of that mud crab is if you get that hook in there right, it's it lets just enough scent out, but it, it, it keeps it from anything else being able to take it off the hook. I mean, it's got to have be a decent size. You'll get a, a pesky sea bass that'll just eat the whole thing, but um, usually most trash fish are trying to smash that shell before they just swallow it. So the sea bass will just come up and straight up swallow a massive mud crab sometimes that they're never going to be able to pass. It probably kills them. Um, 
but that's that's my next next year. What about you? You got anything else? Um, I mean, I think it's like as far as like offshore baits. You know, this is a good time like that near shore to. I want to say like mid shore. Yeah. Like that ten mile range, ten to fifteen mile range can be very productive. Um, you groupers. Know, yeah, groupers, that kind of stuff. Squid's not a bad choice. Um, if you do have some leftover cigar minnows, that kind of stuff. This is a great time of year because there's such a variety of fish in that near shore to in or near shore to mid shore range per se. That I mean, white grunt sea bass grouper. Um, jolt head some, porgies. Yeah, jolt head porgies. There's red snapper, which Tog. you can't keep. Tog. You know, don't go out there and short yourself by only having one or, you know, one thing. Right. right. Um, so, you know, having some squid or cigar minnows or something like that, I feel like is a great thing to have right now. For sure. So. And if anyone, me and Mike were talking about this earlier, if anyone on here has fished squid for redfish in the wintertime, let us know because that's one th- I'm sure it's productive but I would love to know let us know on Instagram or, or on the YouTube video just leave a comment because neither of I have neither Mike or I have tried mm-hmm. fishing you know squid like you buy in bottom fish with offshore in the winter time for redfish and I feel like that could honestly be a pretty good bait yeah I know um, guys fish it out of the jetty for them and catch them but yeah. as far as like in the creeks and stuff like when like they're being picky when they're yeah. being picky in the creeks or on the docks like is that a bait that kind of gets them fired up I don't yeah. know it's got some stank to it. It's got some wiggle. Mm-hmm. So I, I could imagine it being a pretty solid bait. Um, all right, what's your next one? Bait fish? Some type of bait fish? Probably. The mud minnow? I feel like the. it's so it hard is. to pick your favorite because the yeah. mud minnow, too, I also love a mud minnow in the winter. I was going to say, I mean... It, when I need all, that live wiggle. Yeah, I was going to say, it all comes down to kind of the scenario that I'm yeah. in um, to what I want to use. But the mud minnow is a great one. Yeah. But again you're you're limiting yourself you know you're cutting out your black drum you're coming out your sheep's head um and most of the time you're not really using that in that near shore area but this is like you know mainly an inshore um bait but you know for trout and redfish you can't beat it no you really can't it can it can definitely crush it and fishing them under a float can be so fun like i love Mm -hmm. fishing floats this time of year yeah just to watch them and watch them get tanked and oh my gosh it just takes you back to being a little kid watching you know brim fishing yeah. off oh, the yeah. bank with a little float and a cricket and uh there's nothing better really no it is so simple it's I think so that, simple you know it's not like uh you know i don't know we've you made know, fishing so fish. difficult yeah <laughs> so intricate when really it's like just take me to the bank and give me a cricket and, and the old yeah. cane pole um but yeah, the uh, the mud minnow is is pretty money, and that that's really the only bait fish I fish this time of year. If I'm lucky enough to catch some mullet or something somewhere, I'll use that. Maybe some cut mullet, but if I'm using cut bait, I'm typically gonna go with a you know. The only time I'm putting a mud minnow on is when there's really a good chance at trout, or if it's just a really convenient bait for me to purchase. No. Or, and and I, me and Mike both farm mud minnows ourselves, so we're keeping them alive at our house. Um, we're going to do a video showing you how, how to do that. But you can keep mud minnows alive all winter. So you can go buy a couple, feed them cut shrimp, keep them alive all winter, and have that backup bait source. So the reason I fish mud minnows a lot in the winter is, be you know, if I am bait fishing, is because of the convenience of keeping them alive, yeah. being able to just scoop some out of my tank in my garage, throw them in my boat, and, and be good to go. So I was saying, like, the other day I bought three dozen as a backup plan, and fish hit heart baits all day long yeah you know and i i mean we used three mud minnows that was it <laughs> i still got two and a half dozen i don't want to go throw them away i don't want to just return right them. it's Maybe nice to have that little home so, tank for them so yeah um, um but yeah i think that really kind of seals it up i am curious again you guys if anyone has fish squid let us know i would love to know how, how that is i'm going to definitely try that out as well um, but we're going to try to do some more of these podcast shorts hop on here and just give you all a little little tidbit a little bit of something to get you through the week um, and stick with our, our main podcast throughout the week. If you haven't checked out our Patreon page, we have a ton of extra podcast episodes over there. We're putting out new ones every week. So go check that out. And that, that does help support us. Um, we definitely could not do this or put the time in anymore to this if we didn't have that support over on Patreon. So we do really thank y'all so much for that. And uh, we will see y'all next week. Later.